Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mero and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And following the video where I ordered from my own Redbubble store during this AI weekly six weeks challenge, I asked you guys if you want me to make a video talking about recreating famous public domain paintings using AI art generators. And that's what this video is about. I will be recreating the Van Gogh Starry Night painting, as you can see that I've done here, as well as the Mona Lisa. Now, if you do not know if something is in the public domain or not, simply go to Google and ask, is the Mona Lisa public domain? Is in the public domain? Yes. We also have Starry Night in the public domain, and you can literally just type in famous paintings in the public domain, type in Picasso in the public domain, and that basically means that no rendition of this painting, featuring of this painting, is actually going to be a copyright strike. So that's a good thing to work with while still working on the connection that people do have to the original artwork. Now for this video, I'm going to be basically featuring three AI tools that I like to use for recreating famous paintings. And those are Night Cafe, Creative Fabrica Spark, and Laxica. And I don't know if you guys can see here, but I do have Kittle open up. I'm going to show you why, because I do need that in order to complete my transformation or a product within Lexica. Let's start with the first one, which is Night Cafe, and I'm gonna head over to Create, and I'm clicking on this. And what I'm gonna prompt is a cow in a meadow painted in the style of Van Gogh's Starry Night, and I'm gonna use the color painting filter using one credit to create four image variations. I'm gonna quickly go to create another one, the same exact prompt, but in this time I'm going to choose the detailed gouache painting filter and then I'm going to head over to Creative Fabrica, go to Spark, Create Art, type the same thing here, a cow in a meadow painted in the style of Van Gogh's Starry Night. I want it to be a painting and I want it to be maybe four by five ratio, Ignite, and I'm going to do the same thing with watercolor for example. Ignite and now on Lexica using the V3 model one by one ratio and the V2 model one by one ratio. And now I'm going to explain a little bit about what I did with each and every one or why I chose each and every one of them. So we finished with our Night Cafe options. Let me just open them and then explain a little bit for those of you who don't know what Night Cafe is. So basically Night Cafe is an AI art generator with multiple filters. I kind of like using it a lot. And while it does have plans that you can do for every month. You can also buy credits and you've seen that creating these four images cost me one credit and every single day you get an email telling you, hey, you have five free credits today. And if you can look here on my notifications, I've already claimed mine. Now these images come off rather small. However, I can make each and every one of them bigger up to 8,000 by 8,000 pixels and 72 DPI, which still covers a lot of products. I also have these here. I think this one is my favorite out of all of them. And if you want to make it bigger, simply click on this button, spend another three credits and upscale. So by creating eight different variations and upscaling one of them to 8,000 by 8,000 pixels, I have actually used the free credits that I have today and didn't actually pay anything. For those of you who want to get memberships to Night Cafe or extra credits, we have a little bit of a discount in Night Cafe for May Tribe community members and it's going to be down below in the description. My larger cow is already generated and I can click here more and download my image. And again, that will be 8,000 by 8,000 pixels. Moving on to create a Fabrica Spark. Oh, wow. Okay, so saying painting or watercolor, like the watercolor painting definitely refined everything that I have here. I don't really like the paintings as much, but this came out actually kind of cute. So what I want to do if I want to use that one is I'm going to click on the arrow here and generate private download. You can just publish it to create a Fabrica Spark and anyone can use it. You can publish it and hide your prompt or you can generate a private download, which is what I'm doing right now. Let's just download this one first. This is my Night Cafe cow and this is the cow made with Creative Fabrica Spark. Now, I don't know what kind of programs you are using um, on a Mac. So let's just check the size that I got, which is 4090 by 5100 pixels and 72 dpi still good enough for a lot of products especially stickers and notebooks and small things and of course if you're using stable diffusion you can make it bigger and also with my internal this is like for mac but I am, i'm guessing for any computer you have color adjustment settings to your default view i can make this photo 
brighter, I can make it more saturated, I can play on the highlights or on the shadows to basically, I don't know, fit it more to what I want to do with it. If I want it to be like very contrast or if I want it to be very bright and happy, let's call that happy. And I can also do the same obviously to my cow here by increasing the exposure, not that much, and increasing the shadows. I think you also should try and do something like this. For example, right now, the screen that you're seeing is not the same thing that I'm seeing because my screen is a little bit lower on the exposure to begin with. So always make sure that your screen settings are very bright so you can actually see the photo that's going to be published. And let's go on to what was created with Lexica. Oh, I just love Lexica so much. First of all, this has nothing to do with Van Gogh Starry Night. It's a cow. And there are stars. Maybe the cow itself looks a little bit starry night, but I still love it anyway. <laughs> um, this one, I think the sun is very starry night. This one a little bit. This one creates a little bit more of a starry night effect. These ones were more. So this was made with the V3 model and these were made with the V2 model. One of the main features that I like with Lexica is that they have outpaint. So for example, if I want to use this photo, but I want to make sure that the cow is more centered. I can outpaint this photo, which means it's going to take the cow and it's going to push it further backward in the design and then display four different options for me to download, which are, you know, as you can see, the cow is smaller, so I can have like a bigger painting. And if you look at the sky, the sky is a little bit different in each and every one of them. The front is a little bit different. And that's one of the features I like the most. Now, the V3 options of Lexica cannot be enlarged at all. Let's say I want to use this one. I can click here and it will download it. Same with this one and with this one. Oh my God, I'm, I'm obsessed with cows. I, I don't know what to say. And now with these versions made with the V2 filter, I can make them a bit bigger. Let's choose this one. I think this one is kind of cute and I'm generating a bigger option for it. Now let's have a look at what the small option gave me. This is the V3 without having any kind of enlargement options. It's 1024 pixels. That's nothing. It's nothing. And even if I go here and I download the one that was made to be bigger, which is, I think it's this one. As you can see here, this one is 2560. Still a very small size. So for those of you who watched me on, I think it was week four of the Redbubble challenge, you know what I'm about to do now. I'm going to click on create new project with Kittle. And this is something very unique to Kittle as a platform. I'm going to select the under DPI. It's going to be on the 5,000 by 5,000 pixels. And I'm going to upload all of these on the side that you see are also from Lexica. I'm going to upload one of the cows in the meadow, like this one, and also the enlarged one. Now, this is very important. If this photo is 2560 by 2560 and you're going to take this photo and you're going to do like this, it might look nice here because you're looking at a screen. You are looking at a very, very, very small screen. And this is not how you print things. That doesn't mean that stretching the photo is going to make it better for printing. No. What it is going to do is create something very pixelated. However, what you can do using Kiro is to vectorize this image, turning it into a vector file, which will have a limitless size. So I'm choosing the image vectorizer and you can actually control how many colors are going to be available in this vectorizing process. I chose the max, which is 16. And let's vectorize this because once we vectorize it, we can do anything with it. We can download it to 10,000 by 10,000 pixels and 300 DPI, which is an option with Kittle. They have DPI control. They have these larger sizes. I do have to say that based on your computer processing power, this might not work to actually be downloaded because your computer might block something so strong. Now, as you can see here, while I was rambling on, this vectorized my image, basically taking the image, analyzing it, and basically splitting it into 16 different colors, which I can now stretch and this will be how it's going to look and it's going to print well on everything. Yes, it has these lines here because that's a part of the vectorizing file, but it does create some kind of a grunge effect that I really, really do like. And then again, we can download it by going here and the maximum size is actually 
10,800 pixels to download this. I recommend downloading it in JPEG because PNG will be far too much. Now, I do want to do another rendition because we did talk about the Mona Lisa. So, Night Cafe. The Mona Lisa with blue hair and sunglasses holding a cat. Color painting filter. Even though I'm, I know I'm going to recreate it again with the other filter. Holding a cat. Detailed gouache. You know what? I'm also going to do another another filter and this time I'm not going to do the blue hair sunglasses holding something I'm just going to do the Mona Lisa with blue hair and I'm going to choose the candy filter it's going to be rather funny and I can close in my Van Gogh cows go to CF Spark type in the very same thing watercolor painting ignite let's add a cartoon variation to it that would be interesting and of course go to Lexica and type in the same Thing, holding a cat with Lexica V2 and with Lexica V3. Let's go back and see what it's done. Oh my god, okay, this is so weird. Let's open the three options. This is so weird. Okay, I do not know what happened here, but this is what happens when you're using AI. I don't know why I tried to give her curls and the curls are like pink and then half of them are blue and her face looks very deformed. This looks like Picasso wanted to play around with the Mona Lisa. And this just looked like a space woman cat something. So no. This was the second filter, which was the detailed gouache. This one is actually kind of cute. Not as the Mona Lisa, but it came out kind of nice. These ones are totally unacceptable. And yeah, it didn't handle it well. It did not handle it well. I feel like maybe it was like too complex for this. And also this is supposed to be the candy filter, which it's not. What did CF Spark gave me? Okay. None of them were kind of what I was looking for. Let's see how Lexica did it. Ooh, hello, Lexica. The Mona Lisa with crazy weird hair and a blue flower with half sunglasses, but it's still kind of cute. This one is kind of impressive. Uh, oh, she's holding a cat, which is what I told her to do. This one is actually kind of precious. I am totally going to download this one. This is a V3 model, so I can't make it bigger. This one, is that a cat in her hair? <laughs> Oh my god, this is so weird. Here we have her with blue sunglasses and half her hair is blue, half her hair is um, orange. This one has her with like makeup and a blue cat. This is actually kind of cute. And we also have another blue cat here. Now, one thing that you can do with Lexica, let's go over. Oh, she has nice makeup. I can sort of create more variations of this creation as well as maybe let's create more variations of this one. As you can see, it created variations of the same thing. This was the V2 model, so I can actually make it bigger if I want to before downloading it. And this is the V3. This is precious. This is adorable. Like, this is so weird. How many fingers does she have? <laughs> Maybe I should try to type in with less fingers. AI. But I honestly think that this is, is kind of cool. I kind of like the whole concept of this. So I might just download one of hers because I'm still technically while filming this video on week four. So it's kind of my week of doing these things. Let's check out these cats here. It's like she's very, very well polished and the cat is kind of blurry. I feel like it's the same with this case. It's not really emphasizing on the cat that much. Maybe this one is cool. Uh, I did like that one. And of course, what I'm going to do here is just hide this vectorized file vectorized image and where is my mona lisa let's upload that to kittle put the photo in the middle image vectorizer all the way up to all the colors and vectorize my image on the sidebar here by the way you can see a bunch of stuff that i also did with lexica this is an owl drinking coffee i literally put the owl like inside the coffee mug which was kind of cute and my mona lisa is vectorized and in this case i don't like it I feel like a lot of times when you look into AI art, it can be a hit and a miss because the software does something and if you don't like it, just try to render something else or do something else. I'm kind of scrolling down because I have a lot more Mona Lisas here. This was one of the versions of the Mona Lisa that I did last week from Lexica. And then what I did is clear the background. Kittle has an AI background remover here. 
and then I actually made this into a whole other design. By the way, if you like this video so far or found this content useful, please hit the like button down below because every time you do that, it really does help my channel and subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. Obviously, this could be a good design on its own. It's kind of cute. It's the Mona Lisa. However, what I ended up doing with her is designing text on Kittle and wrote modern day Mona Lisa on it and it made it look like kind of a 90s poster. It also looks really good on t-shirts. So this is one example of basically taking a famous artwork that is in the public domain. This one was made using Lexica. I vectorized it using Kittle and then completely created the design. This is one example of how this can be used. Another example is just this cow here because it's just from Lexica and it's vectorized using Kittle. I didn't really do anything much with it. But I also have other things that I did on other platforms. For example, this one that I made just by using Night Cafe, which is the one that we saw in the beginning. And it's basically my, I think I call it the Van Dog. Yeah, that's the Van Dog. I also have Van Nurse somewhere that I should upload. This one was also made using Night Cafe. Let me just make it a bit bigger. This one was Night Cafe. This one was Night Cafe. And these ones were, again, Lexica and Kittle. Now, I want to show you another quick application for this. Even the smaller ones that were created with Creative Fabrica. I'm in Zazzle and I'm going to create a notebook. And for notebooks, this is going to be a very good size. It's not going to matter. So the top notebooks are 8.5 by 11 inches. So what I got from Creative Fabrica is going to be really good. It's not going to matter. I'm going to upload images from my computer. Let's take the Creative Fabrica created ones. Where is that? Where are you? Let's do the Creative Fabrica one. Creative Fabrica Spark also downloads in PNG format, which creates, again, bigger files. And in this case, obviously, you need to design the background or something and put on this. But this is a very good example of how this could be used for a notebook, even though the size, the original size, was kind of small, because we do have a lot of other products that are not Redbubble and need to be huge and fit everything. It's really important to note that when you're uploading AI art to Zazzle, you need to use the tag generative content when you upload the product. That's their rule for uploading AI art. There was a full playlist on Zazzle for those of you who don't know what Zazzle is. There will be uh, some link on it in the description and probably on the screen. And I also made a video of, is it legal to use AI art in terms of different platforms? Not if it's legal in terms of copyright, but if platforms straight out say, okay, you can use AI art or not, can you sell AI art on Society6, on Imprint, on Threadless, on Redbubble? And I really recommend you watch that video next. But with that being said, and with those beautiful pink Mona Lisas, that was it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. And as usual, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!